What's up, Sim Racers? Today is the day. Finally, I'm going to review the AccuForce V2. Thank you for waiting so patiently for me. But there is a lot to do uh, when creating these reviews. <laughs> Lots of hours. This is actually, I don't even know how many takes this is, okay? I even have a wardrobe change in between this one. So, uh, but yeah, let's go over it. I'm going to give you my uh, impressions. I'm going to even, even compare it to um, the Fanatic. Fanatic V2 from what I came from. Just my experience that I had coming from a belt driven wheel uh, to a direct drive wheel. I think that's what a lot of my viewers want to know. Uh, most most streamers tend to shy away saying you can't really compare them. Um, you can compare them. They're comparable. They're on a different level from each other, but I can at least give you the feedback of what I think. Real quick, you know, what I look for in a direct drive wheel. I want smoothness, I want strength, I want the uh, power to come in when I hit the small bumps, the small little deviations in the track. I want that to be pronounced uh, road effects, okay? And uh, I want the curves to be feel like curves. I want to feel the compression of the tire of the curves and stuff. Uh, and I want not too heavy of a steering wheel. I want it to be light, uh, but when I hit the curbs and stuff, I uh, want to feel heavy. So that's what I'm looking for in a direct drive wheel. And that's what I was, uh, that's what I got out of this V2 Pro. Okay, so that's the great news about it. Uh, I'm going to throw out some specs to you. I'm not going to list them all because they've, they've been out forever, right? Uh, but the ones that are important 13 newton meters of torque, constant sustained torque, 13 newton meters. Uh, you got a plus 20% peak, uh, which goes up to 15.6 newton meters, uh, which is great. Plenty strong, actually. Uh, it's very, very fast. Uh, the the bit rate on it, or the dual stream technology that they're using, uh, is 2,000 hertz. So it's 1,000 hertz from the game, and uh, 1,000 hertz from the Sim Commander software. So if you're not using the Sim Commander software, it would be a little bit slower updating it. So. Uh, you're going to want the higher uh, communication. You're going to want to use SimVibe. I'll tell you that right off the bat. You can get away without it, and I've heard of people uh, being happy with it. Uh, but to me, it's just a slight step up from uh, belt-driven, just using the regular, uh, not using SimVibe. Not a slight. It's uh, give you a 20% increase uh, if i got to throw a number on it. It's not enough to justify the cost unless you use SimVibe, in my opinion, uh, because the software is what really makes this unit uh, shine. Uh, but we'll get into that uh, further. Anyway, uh, 4,500 degrees of rotation. This thing spins forever, guys, forever. <laughs> uh, 16,000 PPR, this is pulse per revolution, positional feedback, 16-bit uh, controller loop resolution, uh, two milliseconds uh, instruction time, um, so that's freaking fast. Uh, it comes with Sim Commander. Actually, when you buy the unit, it does come with Sim Commander. And uh, this is a nice wheel, like I said in my unboxed uh, look. I like the wheel. It's a little bit not dished enough, but I can understand why they did that. Uh, it's a, a inexpensive wheel, but the quality is very high. And for a complete package, it does the job. Uh, I really have um, no complaints of what the wheel actually does. It turns my car. <laughs> and it feels really good in your hands, too, actually. Uh, nice, soft, plush. Uh, very, very good stitching uh, with the you know red leather on there. Alcantara, 330 millimeters, like I said. Suede-like uh, finish. Uh, so, yeah, really, really good. Uh, so anyway, that's that's a look at the specs. I'm going to roll through here. I do want to touch base on my buying experience from uh, from them. I'm not a uh, new customer. I've bought their Sim Vibe. I've bought some transducers from them, uh, and I've always had a great uh, buying experience. And with this one, it was no different. Uh, it was just uh, just as phenomenal as before. Uh, they actually didn't have the mod 30 momo that i ordered and uh they quickly got back to me and this is all during christmas rush quickly got back to me uh told me they didn't have it <laughs> i'm a little impatient 
And uh, so I say, hey, how about, well, I'm not impatient. I'm just very anxious to get my hands on it. Uh, I said, how about you just up, up me to two days shipping and so I can get it out by that weekend. And this was like Thursday, I think, uh, so that I let them know that. And uh, sure enough, I had it Saturday. So uh, it was good. They just marked off the difference of it. And that was actually with two orders because I ordered the unit first, the base first, and I forgot the angle plate. And uh, so excited, I forgot the angle plate. And uh, and actually, at first, I was thinking I wasn't going to use it. And then I was like, no, I need all the options I can get. And I'm glad I did get the angle plate. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered the angle plate and the mod, uh, the Momo wheel with it at that particular time. And then I found out the wheel wasn't going to come. So I said, hey, can you just throw in the angle plate into the box? Because <laughs> that's normally how you would ship it anyway, right? And uh, knock off the difference and up me to two-day shipping. So yeah, boom, they did, credit my credit card. Just fantastic service. Uh, when you first uh, order the, the wheel set, uh, they'll send you an email uh, with a bunch of links. And uh, these are all the links. This is study time, guys. <laughs> You're gonna wanna study up on some of this stuff because uh, SimVive is involved, uh, but I don't know any sim racer out there that doesn't like to tweak force feedback, whether it's in-game. Uh, just think of it as, is tweaking it in game except a lot more elaborate and I got a whole section on software to help help you guys out uh, with that so uh, and you can all of course ask me uh, they're actually available to ask and they have a lot of videos on YouTube already uh, to, uh, explaining some of the stuff uh, so I do recommend that as well so anyway um, yeah a great great uh, experience with uh, with ordering it so oh, my cameras Hey! <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into a little bit about more about the product. And I have a little list here, as you can tell. Uh, the wheel rim and button box. I already talked about the wheel rim. Button box is really good. Uh, the tactile feel on it. It's got a nice tactile feel. Um, these top adjust up and down, which is great. So you know, depending on where your thumb placement is, you can you can see here. I have them. Uh, adjusted up already so you can adjust it up quite a bit higher actually the bottom ones don't adjust I kind of wish those would just to give you some more options but you know uh, just more options for for wheels because uh, some wheels may hang down a little bit lower here and you may need that okay zoom in here there we go uh, you may need that so that's having a zoom problem anyway um, yeah all, all in all really good 13 buttons including the horn. I generally use this for like pit limiter or something like that because I don't honk. <laughs> Unless I'm playing Forza Horizon 4, then I use it as a horn, <laughs> which is kind of cool there for that uh, reason. Uh, B and G type quick disconnect. I love this, this uh, quick disconnect. It's very satisfying to put on and take off. And uh, I'm just going to do it again, okay? You just snap it on there, hold the collar, and then turn it until it snaps in. There it goes, it snaps in. Uh, and it's it's not, you know, I'm pulling myself to the wheel. It's not coming off. There's no set screw to use. Uh, there's no uh, lack in precision. You don't lose any loss of power through your, through your quick connect. And you shouldn't, right? It is. It feels as if you are uh, have this rim bolted to the spline shaft, that's, to the motor shaft going through there. So very precise. Uh, no wiggle at all. I love that. Uh, plus, it feels very uh, <laughs> automotive and high tech. So, because uh, you know, you just grab it and yank it off. It, it's very satisfying. I know there's some Q, uh, Q1, QR1, I think they're called uh, disconnects that you can get to. Another great thing about this thing, you can mod them to, to the day's end, right? Uh, but yeah, all in all, really good package here for the complete package. So, uh, next up is the paddle shifters. I uh, I think they're soft, <laughs> okay? And you'll notice these are not the stock paddle shifters. So let me talk about the paddle shifters here in a second. Okay, paddle shifters. Sorry, I had to pause it for a second. Family life. Uh, these are not the stock paddle shifters. These are some Sam Maxwell magnetic 
shifters. I love these things. Uh, definitely worth the upgrade. But we're not talking about that anyway. We're talking about AccuForce, which these are the stock um, paddle shifters. Let's stick that back on there. Uh, these are actually really good paddle shifters as far as function. They function just fine. They have too much travel for my taste, uh, but you may like them. A lot of stock paddle shifters aren't really up to today's um, standards, I think. Uh, magnetic ones are the way to go nowadays, uh, but these are fine. Beautiful carbon fiber, uh, all one piece, billet aluminum. Got the little switch there. Uh, sorry. The switch in there for it. Uh, they are adjustable, so you can adjust your throw outwards, outwards this way or further in, which I did do. I had my throw adjusted further outwards. And then you can turn this dial here. Uh, to when your your nut comes in contact with that switch. So you could actually have it clicking right off the bat, uh, right off the bat right there, have a click, or further down. So you can judge your, your uh, clicking travel, <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, But yeah, real good, really well built. They have some adjustments here on the outside of it. They're kind of pointless. <laughs> Because you can't go anywhere with this shifter. You can't go in with it because these adjusters are in the way. Uh, you can't go outwards with it. Because there's only two screw holes right here to screw them down to. So I'm not sure why they're there. Uh, those extra holes seems like an extra machining cost. <laughs> but uh, that doesn't do anything. Maybe you can actually use these on other, other shifters. Or maybe it's something they're coming out with uh, a different shifter, uh, paddle shifter in the future. And this is already... Kind of rev to incorporate that i don't know uh, i'm not the uh, designer or engineer on on this one so but uh this is what i'm finding so other than that they're functional they're good uh they're just a little soft for my taste so i recommend you upgrade to some magnetic uh, shifters of any kind it really doesn't matter the brand uh also the controller box that's the next thing the controller box i'll flash it up on the screen here so you can see it uh but it's loud. I mean, it is really loud. So I have a custom built PC that I built myself and check out the, it on the channel. And uh, I have like 10 fans in there, right? And they're going full blast on max all the time. They're actually going on right now. Uh, if I had that controller box on, <laughs> you would hear it over those fans. That's how loud it is. Uh, so yeah, that needs an upgrade, I think, uh, for the price you're paying. Actually, the price is actually a really good price, uh, but I think there has been some advancement in fans, so uh, I would uh, like to see that get updated for for people in the future uh, to have a little bit more of a silent fan out there. But other than that, I mean, the unit works great. Uh, there's no problems with it. Uh, and in fact, the uh, motor itself stays extremely cool to the touch after hours of use. Uh, so really, really good, good, uh, hardware. So, um, uh, next thing when you get out, get the complete unit, you also get Sim Commander 4, uh, highly, highly powerful, uh, system. Highly recommend that you spend some time in it. You can literally spend weeks on Sim Commander 4 to learn it. Uh, if you're new to Sim Commander 4, it's going to be a little daunting to you. I'll tell you that. Uh, but if you're not new to it, if you already have, say, SimVibe and uh, used to using SimVibe for your transducers and stuff, it, the learning curve's not much. Uh, it's just some different settings for the AccuForce wheel, though. Uh, but, yeah, I love it. Uh, basically, when you you power it up, you know, you got the choice of uh, your, your game force feedback and you got foundation. And then you can go an auto-tune uh, to where you go out on the track and run a couple laps, two or three laps, and uh, it'll pull in all the telemetry for you, and you can auto-tune it. That's actually, or you can do a mix of all of it. You know, you do an auto-tune, and then you turn on foundation uh, um, uh, steering, or you turn uh, gain force feedback on with foundation steering, and uh, mix the two together. Uh, the it, It's endless, and you can really chase your tail with this. 
Uh, I actually recommend that people go ahead and run out on track. Uh, just the way it is, launch Sim Commander, <clears throat> go out on track, do an auto tune, and uh, see how you like it. And just start to adjust from there because that's where you're going to learn how to uh, make make small adjustments to your tune and stuff uh, for what you want to feel in this. So other than that, yeah, it's you know it's a little bit of a learning curve, right? So um, there is some concerns for for y'all people out there. You're gonna want a heavy duty. Uh, rig. Uh, literally, when I have, say, I, I'm using iRacing, uh, I've tested all, all my sims, but particular like iRacing. iRacing is now very usable to me now. Really like iRacing now. Uh, on my V2, I didn't like iRacing. I mean, it was okay for competition, but uh, it was very um, numb feeling uh, through the force feedback. So, Sim Commander really brought iRacing to life. But there are some current concerns, uh, getting off on a tangent here, but concerns that you want to have is that uh, make sure you have a heavy-duty uh, rig to mount this to, whether it's a, a steel rig from, from Sim Experience or it's a, a, I'm using a Semetic K2 rig. Love it. It's holding up beautifully uh, for this force. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. You definitely need a... Um, uh, a high-end rig your regular uh, play seat is not gonna do okay uh, mounting it to a desk uh, is gonna wiggle that desk apart eventually uh, so yeah it, it even rattles my keyboard over here hasn't came off yet but it rattles it around quite a bit just from the forces that this wheel is, is putting out so uh, another concern is you're gonna want to keep a couple extra phone cords so it comes with phone cord now and if you got it wrapped up it's, it's supposedly wrapped up around 1080 degrees uh, but this tends to get wrapped up in the um, paddle shifters usually when you're drifting or something like that it'll get hung up on them and uh, kind of a pain uh, I race in VR so this is something I don't necessarily always notice until I go reach for a shift and then I'm like, oh, okay, let me pull this, pull this off. Um, if you're a drifter, you're probably not using, if you're a serious drifter, you're probably not using paddle shifters because your hands are all over the place and you don't want them to hit your, back of your hands anyways. So that's probably not an issue if you're more of a serious drifter. Uh, but rally racing would be a concern because it's going pretty crazy with that too. Uh, but yeah, they come with two, which is great, uh, so you're not down. And you wouldn't be totally down if you broke the phone cord. All it would mean is you, your button boxes aren't working. <laughs> so uh, maybe a deal breaker for you, I don't know. I would just keep a couple on hand. I haven't broke mine yet, but uh, you know, I, I tend to be really careful with my stuff and, and take good care of it. So, uh, But yeah, that's it about that. I don't, do want to talk about... And like I said before, I did a really long review and it was over an hour of this and uh, 40 minutes is just the software, uh, which that's still going to be included in here. But just to give you an idea of how much I can cover, I'm minimizing it this, this, uh, whatever umph go around it is of mine. So anyway, uh, you know, let's talk about what I fill out on track on this thing. Okay. Uh, coming up next, I'm going to pause this. Talk about that for about 10 minutes and come back. Okay, so let's talk about what I fill out on track. And this will relate to, you know, my myself being a V2 owner, uh, Fanatic V2, bell-driven wheel, even if you're coming from, say, uh, the T500 or something from Thrust the Master. Uh, I think the AccuForce is a natural progression uh, for people to go into that's out on the market right now. Obviously, we got uh, Fanatic DD1, DD2 coming to market uh, really soon. And uh, I have a DD2 actually on order, waiting for it to get here. Uh, but uh, this is a really natural progression. So what I feel the most coming from, say, a V2 or a belt-driven wheel, uh, mind you, is uh, the smoothness. It's very, very smooth. I don't feel the notches. It's like butter. It, you know, I've seen, heard someone else say that too. It's like butter. It is. It's like butter. Uh, you have the wheel weight, 
and, and you have that depending on how much you want. Uh, obviously, there is a max of will weight you can have, but uh, but your will weight doesn't pertain to your actual forces like curbs and and uh, and uh, road effects and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you uh, it's just very smooth. So when you go turn it into a curve and your brake point may be here, and then your turn-in points are right here, uh, which, are, which are belt-driven wheel, your turn-in point's gonna be changed now with this wheel because, yeah, your brakes didn't change, so your brake point's still gonna be the same. You're used to that, right? The muscle memory from that. But your muscle memory to overcome the drag that the belts have to zero drag with a direct drive wheel is 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 a lot less so now instead of my turn in point being here it may be over here uh because i'm not having to overcome the drivetrain i'll call it drivetrain loss but the drivetrain loss of turning the wheel uh to initiate the turn in the other direction uh so yeah it's it's very very precise uh smoothness is the biggest thing i noticed uh with it and accuracy in your driving it feels like your car will go where you're wanting it to go, uh, like a real car does. I mean, it's no loss. It's no, and, and I say like a, a an older real car that that's not uh, uh, fly by wire steering. Okay, uh, well, one that's more of the direct uh, with the steering shaft and all that. Uh, and even those old cars when they wear out, you feel that slack before they start picking up. I know some of the older guys out there know what I'm talking about, uh, but and gals uh but yeah this is very precise uh feels really good you know your cars feel better you feel better about what you're driving because you feel like you're getting in something that's that's uh a sports car now instead of a, a, a old jalopy so uh, not that the the fanatic was a jalopy right but it uh it definitely kicked up the bar as far as smoothness and accuracy and that's the biggest thing uh power is of course more uh the power is um I wouldn't say mind blowing uh, to me. It's it's expected. You know, I see so many of these videos out already about how much power these drag drives have. So I was already expecting it to be more power. Uh, but what I like about the power is that it's smooth. It can be very abrupt and violent, uh, but when it comes in, you can adjust smoothness out on it. So it can be fairly smooth power. So it's almost like you feel like you're. When you're going over bumps and stuff, your your tires feel like you're compressing the tire, or your suspension feels like it's compressing, instead of it being really jarring uh, uh, suspension. Now, if you're out on track, say in I racing, you're like a Lotus seventy nine, it's jarring. <laughs> uh, but if you're out there in <clears throat> in a Ferrari four eighty eight, you feel the compression more, and uh, that relates it through the wheel. And so you end up becoming a better driver. In fact, in, in um, um, uh, ACC, I knocked 2.8 seconds off of my lap times, and I didn't do anything different. It's just that I was honed in, and I wasn't worrying about extra inputs or counter-reacting to false um, um, signals from the game, trash in the game. Uh, so it was, it was very... Um, instant, directly, uh, finite, uh, the fidelity was a lot higher. So I like that. It's, it's really good. It's kind of like when you go from, say, a cog-driven wheel to a belt-driven wheel. You notice a huge difference between the two, right? This is the same thing. When you go from a belt-driven wheel to a direct drive wheel, you're going to notice that precision jump, just like you did from a cog to a belt. Uh, it's, it's, it's substantial enough that you feel like you did an upgrade, <laughs> okay? And then you add in the extra torque that comes in with 13 new meters, and it feels really good uh, there. So I could stand a little more new meters, uh, I'll tell you that now. But uh, some cars are downright violent with 13 new meters, uh, like the Lotus 79. Uh, it's too much. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's not like you turn everything you wouldn't want to turn everything up to the max you wouldn't want to turn up your front suspension and your road bumps all the way to the max uh it would just be uncontrollable this thing would be flopping around uncontrollable uh you couldn't drive like that but uh what you want is when you hit those bumps how hard they hit back right and uh on more uh 
more directly uh, suspensions that are harsher you, you feel it more and then suspensions that are softer I want a little bit more power to make them a little bit harsher uh, hopefully that explains what I'm talking about here so but yeah all in all power wise is, is really good so you know keep going uh, but the force isn't as uh, wrist snapping as you you might see people running OSWs with 30 newton meters of torque, right? Uh, keep in mind those 30 newton meters of torque are generally in half for their run torque. Uh, so that's usually their peak torque. So you're around 15 newton meters of joint two off of this baby. So uh, you're not necessarily gaining that much in everyday run torque, but you're, you're your wrist snapping reaction torque to things are going to be you know, a lot higher. Uh, so anyway, is what it is. I'm pretty dang happy with this. I get excited about using this thing uh, every chance I get. So uh, let's just cover a couple of, you know, that, you know, let's go to the conclusion of this all. Uh, let's cover the conclusion and then we'll cover some um, uh, cons about it. So uh, pluses and minuses in conclusion. Okay, let's do that next. All right, guys. So let's get on to the pros and cons of this bad boy here. Uh, I'm just going to knock out the cons really quickly because they're they're not a lot of them. To be honest with you, um, you know the cable wrap is an issue. Uh, they are working on that, from what I understand, as far as coming up with a Bluetooth connecting to the wheel hub or the button box here. Uh, to the motor so that's you know I look forward to that uh, but it's not really a big deal for me uh, it hangs down a little bit kind of makes you feel like you're getting into a real race car because you have it setting up here and those generally have a wire or something to them I've seen and uh, but you do have to plug it in which is kind of a pain and then of course you snap your wheel on and go racing so uh, but the con is that you could break that off uh, especially doing drifting or rally racing or just losing control of your car uh, it could get caught up in the paddle uh, shifters uh, pretty easy. Had it happen quite a bit uh, already. Uh, so, yeah, that's a con. The um, paddle shifters are soft. Uh, I, don't, I don't care for them. I think they're uh, efficient. They do their job. They make the shifts fine. They seem very well built. I'll show it up here on the screen again. Very well built. Love the carbon fiber uh, that's here. That looks great, uh, but they're soft and they lack some adjustment, uh, so that's that's an issue there. The other thing is the buttons on the button box. Um, they're fine. They're just a little soft for my liking. I'm used to some more of the more tactile feeling from like DSD or Fanatic has a very tactile feeling, and these are rolled over on the edges here. See how they're rolled over. Uh, that's fine, it makes a nice smooth surface, but in VR I have a hard time telling which button's which, because uh, I don't. I go from soft edge to a soft edge, you know, and it almost feels the same to me, kind of in the dark, right, in VR. Uh, so I would prefer a more tactile feel button, uh, but as far as the adjustability of them, it's great. I like that. Um, that's it. Oh, and, uh, if they were going to go back, if they are going to go back to the twelve ninety nine, I think it is the regular price, they should include the angle bracket. It's actually a great looking bracket and gives your customer a lot more choices. Uh, yeah, they may not need it, but I think more times than not, they're going to find that they probably wish they had it and then have to go back and order it and wait for it and all that. So uh, it matches the design cues perfectly on their, on their uh, motor base, so yeah, it should include it for that price. If you're keeping it lower, then okay, I can understand that uh, at the thousand dollar mark. So, but anyway, that's it as far as the cons go. And I'll go over the concern real quick. Concerns, biggest concern is you need a heavy duty rig. Uh, get yourself a heavy duty rig. Simitech K2 is a great one. Uh, Sim Experience, of course, has their full motion rig. You know, um, uh, there's some others. R seats, I think. Uh, Simpets running. Uh, Sean over there at Simpits running the RC, and he has great 
great luck with that one too. So, uh, but there are some good ones out there. So look around. Uh, that's the only really concern uh, as far as this goes. You don't want to mount it up to a desk. If you got a play seat, think again. You're going to rattle that thing. Uh, nothing against play seat. I had play seat for years, like play seats, uh, but they weren't designed to handle the higher torque. So you need to get something that's designed to handle the higher forces of a direct drive. Okay, so that's it. Uh, pros. Let's get on to the pros real quick. The pros, uh, man, there's a lot of pros. So I'm just going to try to keep them simple here. Okay. The pros are precision, 13 newton meters of torque, which is great. It's pretty adequate, I think. Um, I mean, depending on your car, if you're someone that runs motion, you, you understand that you know some of the cars, you feel the reaction of the cars more, uh, uh, more specifically. When you go to a, a, a rough suspension car or a tight suspension car, you feel that in motion. And then you go to like a road car, it's kind of soft, like a Cadillac or something like that. Uh, it feels vague and stuff. And you get all that same forces in your wheel. So what you're feeling in your motion rig, you're now feeling your wheel. I do pick up more with my motion rig than I do the wheel. And it's probably being because we got two different kind of devices, brand devices. And so what I'll end up doing is bringing up the forces more on my wheel or I'll settle down my uh, motion a little bit, uh, the levels on my motion a little bit to match the wheel better. Because um, uh, when you got them both in harmony, it's really good, it's bliss. But uh, so yeah, it, you are able to match it a lot more. Uh, with a belt driven wheel, I couldn't match, my steering didn't match what my motion was picking up. I was learning more off the track with my motion rig and getting faster just simply from the cues of the motion than I, than I was through the wheel itself. Now it's, it's the same. They're equal partners now. So love that. Uh, so that's a huge pro for motion people. Uh, I used to think, ah, I didn't need the direct drive wheel. Uh, but the fidelity uh, and the precision is really good. Uh, the software is another pro. Software is huge. It definitely makes this uh, product shine. Uh, it's a golden nugget of this product for sure. Uh, it's endless. You can make the wheel heavy or you can make it light, uh, which I like uh, a little bit somewhere in between, but on the car, you know, if you're in a go-kart, you want it you know, a little bit light, you know, but if you're in a, a truck or something, I don't know, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you tune it to your liking and then you don't have to worry about say, you know, belt driven wheels, you, uh, tune the wheel heavy and it's hard to turn. And when you go hit the curbs, those are guineas, right? They're really hard and abrupt. Um, this one doesn't, the Force doesn't do that. It doesn't have to do that. It, it's, you adjust your force feedback for your wheel just to be what you are comfortable with. And then you dial up the road effects or you dial up the curbing to what you like. They're all independent of each other. So you can have a light wheel and react hard to curbs all you want, just like in a real car would be. Um, so yeah, really, really another positive and, you know, check out the software portion of this review. Actually, you probably already checked it out because this is the conclusion, right? Uh, but yeah, the, or sorry, this is the, uh, pros and cons conclusion coming next software will come up next and then we'll do the conclusion after that. How about that? So, um, yeah, that's it for the pros and cons and, uh, Let's go to the conclusion. And of course, obviously the software uh, will be first and then you'll see my conclusion at the end of it. So, hold on. The conclusion of the AccuForce V2 Pro Kit. Uh, I am very satisfied with this kit. And I gotta say, the thoughts that come to my mind when I'm gonna fire up my my sim rig is is it's just a lot of excitement you know i have a really fast boot up time there's no heat on the motor after hours of playing for me hours of testing and uh it's got a really satisfying quick release which i really like the uh it works with every pc game out there uh the only game that sim commander didn't work with that i have 
is uh, Forza Horizon 4. Uh, but they have it for Forza, Forza 7, Forza Motorsport 7, so I would imagine Horizon 4 would be coming in the future. Uh, actually, everybody's waiting for Forza Horizon 4 to get uh, the the data out port so my motion will work with it too so it'll be coming uh, but yeah so it works with all the available PCs out there which is great and it's definitely going to take your driving to the next level uh, like I was indicating earlier uh, you're going to notice the the snapping of the reaction to bumps the just harshness that is, that is really there uh, that you may not have experienced before uh, you're going to notice the smoothness. The biggest thing is the smoothness and the uh, actual precision uh, that you're turning. Uh, so it's, it's no more of this extra, uh, it's unnecessary to over, you won't overdrive your car like you used to. Uh, because what you're going to be feeling through the wheel is going to be more one-to-one. -one, uh, whereas before it it probably wasn't with a direct drive wheel, or especially if it was a cog wheel like a G27 or a DFGT, something like that. Uh, old, old wheels, right? Uh, so, yeah, definitely high end uh, and, 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 and satisfying to drive. I actually look forward to, well, I always look forward to driving, but this is, you know, maybe it's because of the newness of it. I don't know, but it's, it's actually pretty fun. I've had this for. Uh, a couple weeks now, I guess, and um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It took this long to do a review just so I can be thorough with it and uh, make sure I covered all the bases for y'all guys out there and uh, and gals, guys and gals out there. So anyway, uh, the power is is satisfactory. I do crave more power, and you know, for this conclusion, I do crave more power. I think they would knock it out of the park with say like a twenty newton meter. Um, offering from them maybe a v3 or something like that or v20 i don't know uh but yeah i think you know because there are some of us i would say probably 20 percent of the crowd uh wants that higher power and uh or at least experience it right um but i think for the 80 percent of the crowd this 13 newton meter seems to be fine uh it's if i didn't know there was a higher powered one out there i'd be just as peachy keen with this one uh, so, because it does everything that I want, it has the software to back it, which is important. I always worry about software backing uh, products. I always, I don't want to be tied down to a certain company and they fall off the face of the planet with updating their software. Uh, Sun Experience has been around for a really long time uh, in the in the industry, sim racing industry, as small as this industry is. Uh, but it is growing rapidly, and uh, so I expect they're going to be around for a long time coming. Uh, so that's important to look at when you're uh, buying a direct drive system is a reputable company, and you know this is one of them. So, uh, but yeah, all all in all, I think it's a great package. It's a complete package. I look at it. I have this uh, really slimline looking wheelbase. Uh, I'm able to adapt um, button boxes to it if I want to. I got one right here, uh, DSD one, just a hacksaw job right now, but until I make my plates. But uh, I can modify, modifying is big on this, so I can modify the heck out of it. Throw my Momo wheel on there. I can throw, convert over my McLaren wheel to it like I already did. I already showed you the video of that. You know, it's, it's endless what you can do with these things. Uh, so yeah, very, very fun. I actually recommend, uh, getting this, uh, and just for, you know, this wasn't a provided unit for me, uh, to review. Believe me, I tried uh, the last couple years to get some units uh, or get a unit in just to try, just review and send back. But, uh, I finally got tired of it and went ahead and bought one and, uh, glad I did. Glad I did. It's actually a really fun unit and, uh, look forward to playing with it more for sure. But, uh, anyway, check. Leave me some comments below uh, if you have any questions. Uh, I encourage you to watch the software. Uh, I also have some more SimVibe software out on the channel uh, that you can uh, locate that talks about SimVibe and the vibrations. And it's like a three-part uh, setup because back in those days, I couldn't just roll the film like I have. I can now. But 
but yeah, check out the software. You're going to want to spend some time on it. Uh, you're going to want to study up a little bit on it. And then once you get out on track, it's going to make a lot more sense to what you just read about uh, and when you fill it on the track. So don't get discouraged if you get out on track and everything just feels funky to you. Uh, it, it's the software that you don't have tune. I suggest do auto tune, run out on the track, come back, do the auto tune, and, uh, and then go back on track and have some fun and just do some slight adjustments. Uh, you'll be good to go. So, uh, and, and set it up per car. So, but yeah, that's just some extra little verbiage there for you, uh, little little tips uh, for you out there. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I'll see you on the track. I'm out.